So what doesn't work is lecturing. So if you if your parenting style is more authoritarian in nature and you think you're going to be able to just sit your child down and tell them you will not do this and your child's just not going to do it, uh, it doesn't work that way. So having these conversations actually setting up the ability to have these conversations actually starts very early in your child's life because it's the quality of the relationship you have with your child that determines how effective these relationships are going to be what that means is that the best approach that you can have the best parenting style to maximize the chances that your children will hear you when you're having these conversations is to have a very authoritative approach to parenting, which means that you spend as much time listening as you spend talking. So you ask your children questions, you, you problem solve with them, you use collaborative problem solving with them. If you have that, that nature of a relationship, that allows you to then have a conversation with them about drugs and alcohol that would go something like this. So I heard about that party last Saturday night. Some of the kids got busted smoking, you know, weed at one of your friend's house. How are you feeling about that? And the child responds, well, what would you do if you were a parent in that situation? How would you handle that if that was your child? So you draw your children out. You find out what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Don't disagree with what they're thinking and feeling. Just listen. And then you find a creative way of talking to them like, well, what would you want us to do if that was we were in that situation? So you're you're it's a welcoming conversation. And then you could share a little, you know, a little bit of detail with them. You might say, yeah, you know, I was I was watching uh, Dr. Farrell's video the other day and she was saying something about this marijuana being really powerful and actually causing damage to your brain. I mean, what are your thoughts if that's true? Um, I mean, the brain's kind of an important organ in your body, right? You take care of it in all the other ways. So that's how that conversation should sound and should feel to the child. You want to keep these conversations short and you want to start having them when children are in the third grade. So you and you can have you can have conversations about drug and alcohol without talking about drugs and alcohol. So you can talk to your children about toothpaste and they're putting toothpaste on their toothbrush and you say to them, yeah, you know, there are just some things that you don't want to use too much of and it's like toothpaste. I wouldn't want you to eat that whole tube of toothpaste, right? We just put a little bit on our toothbrush because if you ate that whole thing, you probably wouldn't feel very good. So you could just, you could start having conversations like that with your child. If you're giving your child some Tylenol, you can say, yeah, you know, nobody would ever want to take this whole bottle for your headache because you'd probably end up in the hospital, you could die. So I'm only going to give you one of these because that's what they say on the bottle. See, they say, so they start to understand that, that there's, you know, there are things that you just don't do a lot of. And so you can, you don't have to hit them upside the head with all this really heavy stuff at young ages. Um, and then you can also use situations that are happening to, in the community. Uh, as jumping off points for these conversations or something they might have seen in the news as jumping off points. You could read something with them. Uh, you you know download an article and then just say let's read this together. I, I don't really understand this stuff and maybe you could explain to me what kids are thinking. Not what you are thinking necessarily. What are, what are kids your age thinking? Uh, so those are just a few possibilities.